In this video, I'm gonna show you how I bought 26 properties and sold some of them and developed a portfolio value of over $50 million before the age of 26. I recently turned 26 in January. As I record this, it's the middle of May and I wanna show you exactly how I did this so quickly and scaled very fast. Make sure you stay till the end of the video because I'm gonna be revealing the two top secrets on how I was able to buy and sell so many properties so quickly. How I saved up money, how I found the money, how I found the best deals, how I bought in the right locations that I appreciated the most and the quickest, and how I knew what opportunities to look for that were either great opportunities or opportunities that I could not buy and pass on. Let's start with the first property. I'm gonna show you exactly how I went through all these properties, bought them, the story behind it, and how much money I made. So I'm gonna give it to you all in this video. All right, this right here was one of the first properties I ever bought. I bought this property for $630,000. I added two ADUs and I was into the property for a million dollars and I refinanced it at a value of $2.1 million. And I took that money and reinvested it into more assets. So into the property for a million, sold or refinanced the property for 2.1 million and i found this property off market through one of my property managers that i worked with in the past let's go to the next property property number one the first property i ever got into escrow 595 7th street in imperial beach california this was purchased for nine hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in the middle of the pandemic this was like november of 2020 and it was a four unit apartment complex and it was all two bedroom, one and a half bath units. It was two story units, all townhome style. It wasn't in that bad a condition when I bought it. It needed a new paint job. It needed all new kitchens, bathrooms, but it's not like the property was destroyed. It just needed a cosmetic remodel and a new roof. So I was all into the property for 975 plus $150,000 worth of renovations. When I bought the property, I actually bought it on the market. So I know in my other videos I say it's hard to find a good deal on the market. The best deals are found off market, but if you can look on the market and search for mismarketed properties, you could find a good deal like this one. There was two reasons why I got this good deal on the market on the MLS. The first reason was because the agent was an inexperienced residential realtor. I hate to say it, but it was the truth because he thought that every single unit was only 725 square feet and that's how he advertised it. But when I looked on the tax record and the title report, I pulled the property up and it was a whopping 4,200 square feet. Each unit was an average of 400 square feet bigger up right around there than what the listing actually said. Like each unit was about 1,100 square feet and the total property was like 42, 4,300 square feet. I can't remember, but it was a big property, but it was mismarketed as way less square footage. And when potential buyers see that, buyers look at a property on a price per square foot basis. And if you look at a property with 700 square foot units that are two bedrooms, it's much more appealing to buy a thousand or 1,100 square feet, two bedrooms that are two stories. And there's actually a half bathroom and they didn't even put that in the MLS either. They put it as two bedroom, one bath. It was a two bedroom, one and a half bath. And they had private yards, like little private patios. And that was nowhere to be found on the MLS either. So that was the first reason, just poor marketing and not selling the property correctly. The second reason why was because it was the pandemic. A lot of people were scared of removing tenants out here in San Diego at the time because of the eviction moratorium. So people were scared of the low rents. When I bought it, all the rents were at like $13.50 a month. And then after we renovated and stabilized it, we got the rents to $26.95 each. So we basically doubled the rents. And when you double the rents, the property value also doubles because the property value is based on how much income the property brings in in multifamily real estate. That's how we bought it for $975,000 and sold it for $1.885 million, almost $1.9 million a year later to a temporary one exchange buyer who was actively looking for a property just like ours in the area. And why did we sell it? Because we wanted to go bigger. Multifamily is the most scalable asset class and we utilized a temporary one exchange, scaled up into an eight unit property in a similar area and we still own that property today. Property number two was also a flip, 4536-3836 Street. I bought this property for $750,000 and I sold it 
just about three, four months later for 1.105 million. I was into it, total up the renovations for about 825, I spent about 75K in renovations. It was a front three bedroom, two bath house with a back two bedroom, one bath house. It was a little duplex. This one was also on the market, surprisingly. I found it right when the agent posted it. It only had one photo, again, terrible marketing. I called them right away. I said, hey, I think the agent's name was Jake. Jake, if you get me this deal, you can represent me, you can relist it for me. You're my agent, write me an offer and let's go. After I made that call, he got like 40 other phone calls like in the same hour, but he wanted to work with us because I didn't have an agent, so I was the one he wanted to work with after I called him and was very direct about it. And it was like a 10 day close, seven day contingency, so we went, we went very aggressive, all cash, my partner and I, and we made a good chunk of change on that property. Property number three, I found this property actually on a pre-foreclosure, so this property was on 1270-72 Naranka Avenue, and I bought this property for $600,000, and I sold it for 1.25 million. This property is actually a crazy story. When I found the property in pre-foreclosure, this guy apparently had a bunch of criminal charges for like marijuana, like trying to grow marijuana like at the property. Basically, the city put some red tags on him and said, you can't be doing this, you can't be writing this property till you fix this issue. He ended up never fixing the issue, and from that, he didn't rent the property, the back end was all messed up, the entire property was in shambles, and the worst part is, is that he actually had more debt than what he sold it for to me. So he owed like $650,000 on the property, and I bought it for $600,000. When I bought it, he had to wire $50,000 to escrow in order to close. So he lost a lot of money on this property, and he bought it for like seven fifty dollars or something like that, I think, so he lost a good chunk of change. This was a motivated seller who was in pain, had a lot of issues. When I bought this property, I inherited a lot of issues. The front tenant was a nightmare. I remember one time when I was going to check on the property, like the tenants up front were like screaming at each other, like full force, like speaking some like Farsi language, going crazy. I heard like pots like being thrown, like dishes like breaking. It was nuts. So this property was a nightmare, but thankfully we flipped the front two bedroom, one bath house and the back three bedroom, two bath house. And why I really like this property is because the front structure was a huge four car garage and we turned that middle unit into a two bedroom, two bath ADU or accessory dwelling unit. So we legally permitted it into an ADU here in San Diego. The laws are very favorable. Even though this was an El Cajon, it still ended up working out. The city did take a long time to permit the property or the unit, but it ended up working out and we sold the property as a three unit for 1.25 million, $1,250,000. I bought it for $600,000 just the year before. I did a 1031 exchange and I took, pulled out like 600 grand with the proceeds and profits and put it into a larger property. By the way, I'm starting with all the 12 properties that I've sold and I'm going to the properties that I still own today. All right, welcome to my 16 unit building here in College Area, San Diego. This is only a mile away from San Diego State University. We are on 70th Street and this is all one bedroom, one bath units except for two two bedroom, two bath units. I bought this property for $4.3 million. This property was actually marketed on the MLS, but the agent was actually my partner and I's friend. So we got the property for a good value at an uncertain time in the market. So we picked it up for a very good price. I sold two fourplexes and made a million dollar gain on both those fourplexes and took that money and put it into here. And now, our, now we are refinancing the property at a much higher value of over $5 million just after a few months after buying the property. First of all, properties are stories on how I sold these properties. So the next property is 420-22 East 9th Street in National City. I bought this property for a million 60 and I sold it for 1.84 million. And I didn't do any work at all. This property was in shambles. It was destroyed. All the units were, oh my gosh. I wish I could send you videos or show you videos of how one unit looked, but I deleted them. One unit, the hoarder was so bad that you couldn't walk in any part of the unit. Like there was trash boxes and like 
disgusting food around the entire apartment. It was like 600 square feet and you couldn't even walk inside because it was so nasty. Three of the units were like this. It was one of the most disgusting properties I've ever seen. But you're probably asking yourself, how the hell did Jason buy this property for a million dollars and sell it for almost two million without doing any work? Here are the two main reasons. Number one, we were honestly in a crazy market. This was like peak 2021 when prices were going through the roof. And reason number two was simply because the property was a sick development play. So it was on a huge 10,000 square foot corner lot. It was a six unit property, four units, all one bedroom, one bath, and like a Craftsman Victorian home, and then a four bedroom, two bath, and a three bedroom, two bath duplex. So six units, mostly one bedrooms, terrible condition, but the new owner bought it as a development play. So that's why we got the price that we wanted. I mean, when I listed it on the market, like my partner was like, just list it, I don't want to deal with it. I was like, sure, I don't want to deal with it either. It was a lot of construction. We had like four or five other uh, renovations going on at the same time. So like, let's just sell it and see what happens. I put up for an insane price for 1.8 million and it went 40K above asking. I was like, this can't be real, but somehow it happened. And that was just like a superficial, crazy booming market at the time here in San Diego or any market. So if you were buying real estate in 2021, you know how it was. Next property, 226 Madrona Street, Chula Vista, California. I bought this four unit property, all two bedroom, one baths. It was a two bedroom, one bath house in the front. All of them were two bedroom, one bath triplex in the back. So it's two structures. And then there was two garages facing the alley as well. I found this property on the MLS. It was a probate deal. If you don't know what probate means, it basically means that the owner who passed away didn't have a family trust or didn't have any heirs, and the property ended up going to the state of California, the local government, and they appoint a realtor to sell the property. So when they put the property in the market, put it on for like $900,000, and we paid over 100K above asking because we knew how good of a deal it was. It was very, very low price. The property was vacant, which is a huge plus because getting tenants to move into other properties is a very hard task here in California. That was a huge plus. And then also the reason why we were so excited about it is because all the units were massive. Like these were huge, like wide open floor plans, huge, like sick units. We put a washer and dryer in, we put, they had a lot of parking, huge kitchens, big bedrooms. Like we knew they were gonna rent for a shit ton of money. And we got the highest rents Chula Vista had ever seen for two bedrooms. We rented them for like 2,800 each. We rented the front house for like $3,000. And we were getting insane rents. And that's why we also got a record breaking sale. We sold this property for the highest price uh, fourplex had ever sold in Chula Vista in history. So it for $2 million to a VA buyer that wanted to buy it as an investment, but also live in the property as well. And we sold it with plans to permit the ADU, but we got rid of it because we listed it for a massive price and got a record breaking sale. So that was an amazing investment. What did we do with the money? We did not cash out. I don't like cashing out because you have to pay major hit in taxes. If I made that million dollar profit or $800,000 profit, I'd have to pay Uncle Sam almost half that. So I took those proceeds, deferred taxes, and bought a larger property in Pacific Beach near the water. Next property on 1305 Rincon Road. One of my amazing agents, shout out Dylan Ackley, found me this deal. I bought this property for 1 million and I sold it for 1.875 in the same year. How do we do it? We found the property off market. The seller had her price that she wanted to sell it for. She wanted a million bucks no matter what. I said, that's great, that price makes sense. But I was kind of hesitant because of all the work that it needed. It needed all new kitchens, all new interiors. There were some hoarders in the back. Their mom like was in jail or something and the mom was actually the daughter of the seller. But those two kids, they were tough to move out. We got them out of the property, paid like 20K in like junk hauling fees. And we basically spent like almost a quarter million dollars on that renovation. And it was on a huge lot. So we actually planned to build like four units in the back as well, make it eight unit. But again, my partner and I got lazy. The market was crazy. So we're like, why don't we just try listing it for an insane price? See what happens. We listed it for like 
1819 or something like that. Got a full price offer, ended up closing at 1875. Made about like a $600,000 profit on that one. And we exchanged the funds, of course, to a bigger property. I think you're getting the trend, right? How you grow and scale quickly. All right, welcome to 4776 Bancroft Street. This is a four unit property, all three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome units here in an amazing area of San Diego. We're in normal heights above Adams Avenue. And this property, we bought it for 1.972 million. And we renovated all four units. And we're also adding two one bed, one bath ADUs right here by converting the existing garages. And the value after we are finished will be right around 3.1 to 3.2 million. And the total rental income will be right around $20,000 a month after all six units are renovated and newly constructed. Next property, one of my favorite buys ever. This was one block from the ocean in Pacific Beach. I wish I didn't sell it, but I'll tell you why I had to sell it. It was 813-15 Diamond Street. I bought this property for a million fifty and I sold it for 1.7 million in the same year. This property was bought with an FHA loan. I put three and a half percent down, put like 40K down on this property. It had two garages in the back. It had a one bedroom, one bath in the middle, and then a one bedroom, one bath up front. So it was a little tiny duplex on a little narrow lot, very skinny lot. The reason why I liked the property so much was simply because of the location, and I wanted to actually Airbnb it. It would have cranked as a short-term rental because this property was on Diamond Street. If you're in San Diego, you know how prime the street that is in Pacific Beach. It was right next to like Duck Dive, all the prime bars in that area. So that property would have destroyed it with short-term rentals. The reason why I had to sell it was because the tenants were nightmares to deal with. I kept trying to get them out because they were paying like nothing in rent and I was losing a lot of money every single month because with an FHA loan, I have to pay mortgage insurance, I had a big loan on it and I was bleeding every single month. So I was like, well, I don't want to keep feeding this property negative cash flow and keep taking money out of my pocket. I just want to list this thing, see what happens. I think I bought it for a good deal. And I bought it through an agent that actually found it for me off market. And it was an older seller that had its price and the agent represented me. And then I had my friend who kind of told me about the deal represent me on the sale. So he listed it for $1.7 million. I got a full price offer from a cash buyer. And I basically made almost 700K without doing any work. Just a little bit of headache on negotiating with tenants. But yeah, that tenant tried to sue me, tried to take me to lawsuits, said I was being a bad landlord, blah, 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 blah. You can get a bad luck of the draw if you inherit a bad tenant. So before you buy a property, make sure you see who your tenants are. Talk to them at the inspections during escrow. Next property. 42-48 East 5th Street in National City. This was the biggest nightmare of a property I ever dealt with, and it almost ruined a partnership and almost made the other person hate me. It happened because I hired the worst contractor in all of San Diego, I'm convinced. Even though I did really good on the deal, I bought it for $710,000. It was a four unit property. It was two one bedrooms in the back, and then two two bedroom one baths in the front. And we sold it to a VA buyer. One of my friends had it listed and he got me a pretty good deal on it. I sold it a year later after going through all this bullshit I'm gonna tell you for 1.425 million. And you might be telling yourself, why are you complaining you made a huge profit? But I really didn't because I lost like $120,000 to this guy because this contract that I first hired, that was a referral from like a client slash friend of mine. So don't trust all your referrals. This guy went crazy after I hired him. I think I gave him too many jobs too. So I had this guy on like five jobs. He was doing work on like the 36th Street property, on my Mansfield property. He was doing work on my 7th Street property. And I didn't even tell you the nightmare of my 7th Street property, which I'll tell you. So I had him on a lot of jobs and I think I just overwhelmed him. But this guy didn't have a contractor's license. He didn't put anything in writing. He had like terrible bookkeeping. So I just named off the three biggest red flags you should look out for when hiring a contractor. If you wanna learn more about how to hire the right contractor, you can watch it in my other YouTube videos that I have up. So basically this guy was like hiding things from me. He was like doing cover up work, like painting here, 
putting like a cap in here, like literally gluing it on. I wasn't on them enough. I didn't know anything about construction. So I was like, okay, cool. Here's another check for $20,000. $20, Here's another check for $40,000. But what do you know? I bought the property and I renovated it, had issues. I still made some money on it, but it was the worst experience of my life. But back to the 7th Street property, the first property I mentioned, this same contractor was on that property and Oh my gosh, it gives me a headache thinking about it. So basically, this contractor, Jose, said that he would finish the 7th Street property before the appraisal because I wanted to get it appraised to refinance the property, get hard money debt off the property because I had a 10%, like an 8% interest rate loan on the property and I wanted to put it to a lower interest rate, like three and a half, four percent In order to get that loan, I had to get the appraisal by a certain date or the loan was gonna cancel. And basically, Jose was nowhere close when it got to the date. This appraiser was so cool. I didn't have any cabinets up, any kitchens up, but this guy named Sosh, shout out Sosh, he said, if you just put on the granite countertop, drill some cabinets in, I'll take good photos, pick up the vanity myself with, with like this other handyman, put it on the bathroom wall, he took a photo of the vanity and he said, it's good to go. Like coolest appraiser of all time. And that was one of the most stressful days of my entire life because I thought it wasn't gonna work out. The property was still vacant. I was bleeding, losing money. Like I said, had a lot of issues with property in the beginning, made all the mistakes. Anyways, next property, 311 Zenith Street. I bought this one actually very recently. I bought it for 1.325 million like four months ago, and we sold it for 2,055,000, and we actually sold it big. We bought the property, it was all three bedroom, two and a half bath units, a little fourplex in South Chula Vista, not a good area, next to like a tow yard. It was actually kind of a sketchy buy, not one of my best buys, but it was on the market for like 1.1 million. We got bid up all the way to 1.325 million, Again, didn't feel too good about that. The numbers still made sense. And we ended up doing the work pretty quickly, got all the tenants to displace into other assets in the area. And we were able to do the work very quickly in about three months and sell it about a month after. Nothing really crazy happened on that one. It went smoothly, went well. I have a good construction team at this point. I had great partners, so went perfect. Next property I sold, 4526 52nd Street in San Diego. I bought this property for a million. I found the deal from an agent in my office who had a seller that wanted to sell, didn't want to list it, didn't really want representation, got it off market for a million bucks. It was an okay deal, but the market went down a little bit in that area. And I thought I was gonna get 1.5 million for it, but I only sold it for a million 350. I was into the property for about a hundred grand. After broke commissions made it like $175,000 wasn't that great for all the work that it needed. It needed a lot of work. I did the entire front house, all new kitchens, baths, flooring, lighting, electrical, plumbing, roof, siding, paint, all that stuff, you know, made one of the worst returns I have on my flips. Property number 11, I bought this property in Imperial Beach again, right by the water, 217 Evergreen Street for 1.425 million. It was a four unit property two two bedroom one baths in the front and then two one bedroom one baths in the back two structures amazing location it was super sick love the area like you could see the water from one of the units immaculate property but similar situation as diamond street we couldn't renovate the property fast enough we couldn't get the tenants out fast enough we didn't want to put too much money into the property because it was already in good condition my partners and i all together agreed that it was better to sell because we planned to hold it for a long time and like just cash flow it. But we got a VA loan on it because my, my buddy was in the army. So we put 0% down, partnered up three ways, bought the property, like almost no cash in. But because we had no cash in, the mortgage payments are super high for 1.325 million at like five and a half, six percent And that was recent, so rates are high right now. And we ended up selling the property for 1.925 million. We put it on the market and sold fairly quickly. We wanted like closer to 2 million, but ended up selling for a little less. And then we exchanged that property into a 16 unit development play in Claremont or Bay Park area, that room. 
develop ground up pretty soon here. So super excited about that one. All right, welcome to 4565 North Avenue here in University Heights, San Diego. When I bought this property, it's a long story because I followed up with this owner for over four years. Basically the most of my career so far, I talked to this owner for a very, very long time emailed her every three months asking, are you ready to sell? Are you ready to sell? She said, no, later, later, follow up later, follow up later. And finally it was time and we got the property for a solid price that she wanted. She gave me a price of 2.8 million. We settled at 2.788 million and it's nine units. The only con about the property, there's, there's no parking because the two garages in the back were converting into uh, one, one bedroom, one bath ADU. One studio, six one bedrooms, and then two two bedroom, one baths up front. They're all vacant right now. We're fully renovating it. We're putting like 500 grand worth of renovations in the property. If you look here, we're replacing the plumbing. We're replacing the electrical. Uh, we're painting the entire exterior right now and then we're doing a white with navy blue trim. We might go on with the units, but no, we won't because there's a lot of work being done right now. It's kind of a hazard for my girlfriend who's holding the camera. <laughs> this is the property. It's nine beautiful units, two structures. It's gated. Uh, it's in one of the best streets in all of San Diego, in my opinion. And the property's gonna be worth somewhere around four to $4.2 million when we're done with the property. So here it is. Property number 12 that we sold, the last one, was 1940 31st Street. This is a property I bought for 1.589 million, a 70 unit property, and I sold it for $2,065,000. The reason why we sold it was because it was a huge liability. So there's four units in the front. It was four one bedroom, one bath units. Renovated two of those, added a parking spot in the front, did all the landscaping, exterior work, paint. But the back three units, it was on a canyon and the property was literally falling over like this. Like it was about to fall over. Like all the posts and piers that hold up the structure were like slanted and there was no concrete wall. It was like the most poorly built property I'd ever seen. And when I bought it, I thought I got such a good deal on it because the price per unit was so low for the area. It's an amazing location. It's in South Park in San Diego, if you know SD. We ended up basically selling the property to a developer that's kind of a friend of ours because we simply just didn't have the bandwidth nor the motivation to build seven units on a canyon because that would have cost a lot of money, put a lot of work, and I didn't want to tear down those three units and deal with all that stuff. So it was better to just make a little bit of money and sell it. After all our costs in the deal, it was actually a lower return as well. We probably made like 170K on that one as well between two people. Some of the properties I went to in person, so 317 and 441 Tremont Street. This was a six unit property and a seven unit property on the same street. Two different properties, but bought it in one transaction. I bought this in 2021, like in February. And this was also on the market, very mismarketed, but I called the agent directly, let him represent me, and we got the deal. It actually fallen out with a previous buyer, and we went at the right time. It was all big two bedroom, one bath units, like 900 square feet. Basically, both the properties were in shambles. We fully renovated one of them so far, and the other one, we're still like slowly just raising rents and turning because the tenants just simply aren't gonna move. They just don't want to. It's like their home, they've been there for like 13 years. So we're just slowly raising rents. We've only renovated like two of the units at 441 Tremont but we bought them for such good deals. We bought them for 192,000 a door, which is super cheap for Chula Vista. And we bought them for a total of 2.5 million. And we were an escort to sell them for 4.2 million, but our exchange fell out. So we decided to keep them, but we have buyers to buy them for 4.2 million as is today. 317 Tremont, that was a nightmare process too. There was like an artist in there that like did all his paintings in the unit and he had like destroyed the unit. Like he like knocked down walls, to, like put canvases up. He like moved like the kitchen around, like moved walls around, added the bedroom. Like it was a nightmare unit. And there was like paint and like big shit everywhere. So that one was a nightmare and getting him out of the property was also horrific. Like we bled negative cash flow on that property for so long. The renovations took a really long time. We had to basically replace the entire stucco because like, 
It looked like someone had just like thrown like stucco at the wall and like like globbed it around all weird. Like there was like weird globs of stucco coming out. So we like smoothed it out, put all new stucco on, made it look clean. We had to put in all new windows, a new asphalt parking lot, and renovated all the six units. And like this crazy cat lady in like unit three would not move out for the longest time. So the property's going like cat piss, like when all the five tenants moved in, we got complaints all the time about like the exterior smelling like cat piss. So that was awful. We had to give her like $8,000 to basically leave the property for, you know, that sum of money, big loss. Even though it was a nightmare headache, it's an amazing deal. We bought it for a great price and it's performing well. It's cash flowing like 10 grand a month right now, so it's going great. Next property on 401 Idaho Avenue in Escondido. This property, man, I've had a lot of nightmare properties. So I bought this property for $900,000. It was the same seller who sold me Rincon Road that I talked about earlier. This one was like three houses on a huge acre lot, all completely destroyed. Like we spent over $400,000 on this property. It was a two bedroom, one bath house in the back a three bedroom, two bath house in the middle, a three bedroom, one bath house in the front with a little studio downstairs. And that tenant took a year to evict. He didn't pay rent for a year. And it took us a year to evict that tenant because of all the cases that are backed up from the eviction moratorium. It was crazy, terrible. And we recently just got him out like three or four weeks ago. Uh, no, like two months ago or something like that and have started the renovations. This is a huge bonus tip for you. In most of my renovations, like most people, I don't pull permits, but if you ever are renovating a unit next to a development project, never, ever, ever do an unpermitted rehab because I just got a stop work order from the city, which basically means that I can't do any more work unless I pull the necessary permits and they flagged me down and said, you need to stop all work right now. And the reason why this is so bad is because we're an escort to sell the property and we made a deal with the buyer to remodel the studio to make it habitable because it was so disgusting and unlivable. He told us to renovate it by May 15th. Right now it's May 21st and we probably won't have permits for another month and the renovations probably won't be finished for like 45 days. So we'll probably close in like July. And the sad thing is, is that we're only in escrow for like 1575 million, and we're into the property for like 1.35 million. So by the time this is finished, all the headaches are done. Like we are like 1.4 million into the property just to make like a little bit of 100 grand. Awful return for the amount of brain damage, stress, headaches, and time and money spent. So even though one of the deals was a home run, this one was, an owl. Next property, this property was on Fifth Avenue for 1.725 million. It was a seven unit property. I bought it off market from my agent, uh, Joey Bell Castro. Mostly one bedroom, one bath units with a four bedroom, two bath house and two two bedroom, one bath uh, units in the back. And they all had private yards, ton of parking, great location, Chula Vista. So we really liked the property. We paid a little more than what I liked because it needed a ton of work. Like we spent over 400 grand on these units. Like it needed all new everything. Like you name it, electrical, plumbing, roofs. It needed all new everything. It was built in the 1940s, which means that all the systems were old, inferior, not up to code. So we needed to get a lot of things changed. We were actually an escrow to sell this property for 2.8 million, but we ended up just refinancing it because the buyer canceled because they said it needed like repairs that we already did. It was basically a fake buyer, I think. We ended up refinancing the property recently at 5.75% for five years fixed with Citizens Bank, Citizens Business Bank. And it was actually the last loan they did in the five before they jumped to like high sixes, sevens because rates are going crazy right now. It's mellowed down a lot and hopefully rates will come down later, but we got a good refinance in at a good value at the right time on this property. And it's cash flowing pretty well right now. Welcome to 4526-30 52nd Street here in Talmadge, San Diego. This was my 14th or 15th acquisition in the last three years. We bought this property off market from a broker that I know that works at our company. And he brought us this deal for $1 million. The owner didn't want the property listed. He was very private, didn't want to disturb his tenants. And he wanted a price of a million dollars. 
And although the numbers didn't seem amazing, it made sense because we were in a 1031 exchange. We had some money left over to put down. So my partner and I took $300,000 and put it into this property, got a loan of $700,000, and we also got a lender to loan us $100,000 so we could do the renovations in the property. So we fully remodeled two out of the three units. So we renovated this unit, the, this is the back unit, and we fully renovated the front house. We painted the exterior and did some electrical and plumbing work as well. So I'm happy to say we bought this property as a flip and we are now in escrow at a million three fifty and we're into the property for under budget. We're into the property for a total of about $75,000. So we're into the property right around 1.1 million and we're selling it for a million three fifty and fingers crossed the buyer performs. We are pretty far through inspections. We gave them a $10,000 credit because it needed some minor stuff and the unit that's not renovated because the tenant would not leave. She wanted to stay there. She was elderly. She's lived here a very long time. So she's very happy here and we decided to keep her. And that is the basic story of our property at 52nd Street. We're gonna be taking this money and putting it into another investment as well. So let's go on to the next property. Next property, I'm actually an escrow to sell it as of yesterday. And this was another horrible property to deal with. Yeah, so if you don't wanna deal with real estate, honestly, and you wanna partner up with good people that will do all the work, feel free to shoot me an email at jason at jlnrealestate.com. I still like doing all this stuff. I enjoy turning properties, making money, and we have partners joining us. So if you don't wanna do all this work and this video scares you and you wanna invest passively, hit me up. But anyways, this property, huge nightmare, but a great deal. So when you buy good deals, you're always buying a problem. I bought this deal for an amazing price. 2104 Dale Street, amazing location in South Park. Absolutely phenomenal. Four unit property with a vacant lot and a garage. It was two huge two bedroom units, a one bedroom unit downstairs and a studio and then a vacant lot next to it. And it was like a Victorian kind of house thing that was split four ways. Amazing corner lot. Everything's amazing with the property, but the owner was a nightmare. Carl was his name, I won't say his last name. So Carl was a struggling meth addict. He had meth going in and out of his house. There was a bunch of like weird sketchy kids coming in and out and people begging him for money. People asking for money all the time and like he was getting into fights 24 seven. I talked to a neighbor across the street and they said that the police had been there every single day in the last year when I went to the property for the first time. He actually called me on a mailer that I sent him with that, that said I was looking for properties. It was like a handwritten letter I sent him. And he called me on it and said, hey, I'm looking to sell. I want to get out of here. I'm tired. I want to move to Utah where I'm from. I said, great, let me meet you there. The first thing I hear is screaming, fighting, all this weird stuff, just sketchy vibes total hoarder, mess everywhere, could barely walk in the property. And when I talked to the neighbor, I didn't believe him at first, but when I got further down the process and went into escrow to buy it, there were so many code violations on the property from the city that it was almost unbelievable. And when I talked to the code violation officer, like the city compliance officer about the property, like she fact checked that neighbor. The cops had been there 300 times, like 362 times in the last 13 months. It was unreal. Basically the city, after like the, you know, the hundredth call, right? The city raided the property, looked at every single corner of the asset, and they wrote down all these notes about all the unpermitted work he'd done on the property. So he like created, like he like destroyed an attic and made like a, a legal skylight that like came in through the property. He like added a weird balcony that was super sketchy. He added like stairs in the back that were not code compliant. He had just, just funky shit everywhere that he did, just hodgepodge things. And the city called every single thing out and we were on the hook for it because we bought it. And we inherited all of his problems like the second before it went into receivership. And before it went to receivership, we bought the property before it went out of his hands bought it, he got his money, ran, and we just dealt with all these issues, like all these problems. And it took a year to solve all the problems, 
because we had to draw plans and get permits with an architect on all this stuff for like structural things. And the city took like a year to like get it through the system. And we did the work in like a month and got it checked. But I will probably never do this kind of deal again because you are at the mercy of the city. And that property was sitting vacant for so long and we lost so much money on it. Like we spent over like 150K in paying the hard money lender on this deal. Like it was terrible. But anyways, we bought it for like 1.2. We're into it for like 200 grand and we're an escrow to sell it for 1.795. By 200 grand, I mean the hard money costs and like all the little repairs. The next property is my baby. It's my 11 unit property in Crown Point, a block from the bay, the ocean in San Diego. I'm your baby. Tina's my baby. 11 unit property on Haines Street. This was six studios in the front and then two one bedroom units a two bedroom, one bath unit, and a, th and a three bedroom, three bath unit. So mostly studios and ones. And we bought it for 4.8 million in 2022. Yeah, 2022, in the summer of 22. We kind of paid a lot for it, but we had exchange money. So we had money to place and we put a lot of our money that we made from smaller properties into this one. And it's actually caused us a lot of issues because we've had to change the roof. It was leaking. There's a psycho tenant that calls my property manager every day saying there's an issue and then ghosts him, pays rent, says she won't pay rent, pays rent, says there's an issue. He fixes it, doesn't say thank you. He tries calling again and just like crazy shit. But we've like renovated two or three of the units. This property is still under market rent. We're slowly turning it as tenants, you know, move out. We're not trying to go quick on this one. It's a long-term play, long-term wealth play. So love the location, don't love what's been happening there, but we're very close to getting it fully stabilized. We found this property off market through an email I sent to the seller. So I literally sent this guy an email saying, what price would you sell the property for? He said $5 million. I said, great, let's do it. It needed all this work. And we went into escrow and closed for 4.8 million. And then, Next property is on Imperial Avenue, 5236 Imperial Avenue. This is a two unit property that we're gonna scrape and we're gonna develop into eight new construction units. Hoping that will probably be like 3.2, 3.3 million when we're done. And they're mostly two bedroom, one bath units. Next property that I own by myself only is on 340 South El Camino in Oceanside. I bought this property off market by emailing the seller, that's how I found the deal for $865,000. The Zillow estimate at the time was like 1.1 million. So I was like, this is a great deal. I'm gonna buy it. Bought it for 865, took out my commissions. Was into it for like 900, but then I took out my commissions. Was it 865? I actually bought this property for my parents. My, my parents get the, the cash flow from this property every single month to give back to my parents because the reason why I started this journey was to help retire my mom. So this property cash with my mom every single month. I'm gonna escrow on three properties to buy, but I won't name those for the sake of time. The last property before I tell you my top two secrets on how I scaled so quickly is 3410 Claremont Drive. We bought this property for 1.7 million. We're gonna develop 16 to 20 units on it. We bought it for you know one seven, and there's an offer behind us that watched the property at the same time at two million dollars. We ended up getting an escrow for only $1.7 million and it actually appraised for over $2 million too. So super happy about that one. But a little issue that you should know on this property that might help you was we had major insurance problems because there's a vacant building, like an old vacant church, and the lender for some reason made us like get coverage for the entire square footage of the church. But even the insurance broker said it didn't make sense because we we're planning on demolishing it. So why would we need any liability coverage? But the lenders just didn't understand what that meant. So we had to do it and insurance ended up being almost $12,000 a year. Should have been like $4,000 a year. But anyways, those are my properties. Number one reason I've been able to scale so fast is because I have a very, very profitable business. And what I mean by that is if you are thinking of what career to go in, I would highly recommend going into being a commercial real estate agent or broker like myself. And if you want to be trained on how to do it, I can help you. I can show you the ropes, but this business has changed my life as an agent, as a dealing with only investors, not only have I met and networked with the top 
real estate investors in my area, which I learned all the stuff from on how to buy properties. And that's how I've grown so quick. So I got the knowledge from my clients and then I got the money from selling so many properties. I've sold like oh, almost 150 properties in San Diego. I don't mean to brag, but I've made well over, oh, like six million in commissions. And I've dumped 95% of all that money into properties. And I've built this empire through putting in money, rehabbing, flipping, exchanging, taking all the profits and reinvesting it in the last three, four years. So that's my first tip. Like if you're in a career where you're not making a lot of money, it's very hard to buy property. So you need to change your actions now on what kind of job you're in or what kind of business you're in and how you're spending your time. Because yes, I or other people will tell you, you can buy real estate with no money down, but it's always better to have money. If you don't have money, it's always harder to buy a property. So yes, the gurus will tell you, you can buy a property without money, blah, blah, blah. But in my opinion, get a high paying job, sales career, or a business to help support your investing journey. Tip number two, my secret number two on how I built my portfolio so fast is I've had an amazing team around me. Having the right partners, having the right vendors, brokers, lenders, relationships. The most important thing is having the right partner or partner. I think you should have a max of one or two partners to start this journey with if you're looking to get into it right now. Make sure you pick a partner that brings other skill sets that you don't have to the table. If both of you are deal hunters and neither of you understand operations, management, and bookkeeping, you're gonna have a failed partnership because neither of you wanna do the other extremely important part of the business. I'm the deal hunter, I'm the construction manager, I'm the upfront guy. My partners are the more back-end operations people, taxes, bookkeeping, capital markets. I'm more upfront equities side. So I'm more of like that type A, go, 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 hunt, next deal minded. And my partners are not, or they are, but like they do other things that benefit the partnership in a different kind of way. And I'm so thankful for them because if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I would highly recommend if you're first getting started, wanting to start now to find a partner that will help you learn the ropes in exchange for your hustle and time. So if you have a little bit of money, you have a lot of time, a lot of hustle, you can exchange that with someone who has a lot of money, not a lot of time, and has the experience to teach you and back you into starting your journey as a real estate investor. So I hope this video is helpful. I would greatly appreciate a quick subscribe and a like and hit that notification bell. And feel free to check out other real estate videos, other videos about entrepreneurship on my channel. I hope those stories kind of taught you some things about what mistakes to avoid, how I find stuff, what kind of deals I bought, how I look at deals, and what kind of deals you should buy in the future as well. So peace, have a good one.